Psalm chapter number 30. The Bible says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. And it's not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We'll end our reading there and ask the Lord to help us tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, want to say thank you for another opportunity that we have to be able to come to the house of God. Lord, we don't want to take for granted the freedom that we have tonight. Lord, I pray that you would help us for a few moments tonight as we preach the Word of God. Lord, we realize our inability and our frailty tonight. Lord, we realize that we're just a piece of dirt. And so, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us tonight as we preach the Word of God. And Lord, we'll be sure to give you all the honor and all the glory, for it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, here in uh, these scriptures in which we've read tonight, we find the psalmist is speaking here, and I'm glad tonight that in the Word of God, that the Word of God is not a book that we read one time and we set it down. I'm glad that this book is alive and it's a book that will talk back to you and I. Uh, when you read something that's familiar in the Word of God and you may have looked at it many, many, many times, I'm glad tonight that you can pick it up again, read the same Scripture that you've always read, and I'm glad we've got a God tonight that can tell you something and show you something from something that in our eyes we may have thought that we've got everything out of it that we can get, but I'm glad it's the Bible and it's breathed and it's put in pages for you and I. This did not come up by man, but it came by God. And uh, here in these verses that we've read tonight, uh, sometimes we find here that people think in the day that we and I live in that they are the ones that are keeping themselves alive. But we find here in the Word of God that you and I are not the ones that are keeping us alive tonight. We find here, the Bible says, in verse number 1, Thou hast lifted me up. I'm glad tonight that it was him that lifted me up. I didn't lift myself up. I didn't do nothing on my own. But it's all because of him. Not only did we find that he's the one that lifted us up, but in verse number two, the Bible says, Thou hast healed me. I'm glad tonight that I serve the great, physician. I'm glad there's never been a case brought to him that he had to say, hey, you're going to have to go see this doctor because I can't handle it. I'm glad tonight that we've got a physician. No matter what case you bring to him tonight, I'm glad that he can heal you of whatever it is that's in your life. Not only do we find that he's the one that healed us, but in verse number three, oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive. You know, it's God is the one that's keeping you and I breathing. The Bible says that he holds the very breath in his hand. 
And uh, it's God's the one who's in control of this thing. Now, in the last year and a half has been a very strange and very different time that we've ever lived in in our life. But I'm glad tonight it never took God by surprise. I'm glad the same God that stepped out on nothing said let it be is the same God that tonight is the one who's in control of everything going on in the world. It never surprised God when this thing happened. And what a blessing that that's my God tonight. Now, Buddha, Muhammad, all them people that serve that God, it surprised their God. It shocked them. But our God tonight wasn't surprised. And that's the reason tonight it's a blessing to realize that it's Him that's the one keeping us alive. Not you and I. Now, I'm not talking about getting foolish and getting crazy. Don't go out licking doorknobs or nothing like that. But I'm talking about, hey, God is in control of this thing. It ain't you and I, but God is in control. And we find here in verse number 5, the Bible says, For his anger endureth but a moment, In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And then in verse number 11 of the same chapter, we find the Bible says this, Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. With the help of the Lord for a few moments tonight, I want to preach on this word here in verse number 11. Morning! To this word here in verse number 5. Morning. From morning to morning. Now we find some very interesting words here in verse number 5 in the text in which we will be using tonight with the help of the Lord. Uh, first of all, when I get to thinking about these words here in this verse, they are interesting as to how God uses them. Uh, we will read this verse. I'm going to emphasize some words to you tonight that are words that are very interesting to me. We find here the word in verse number 5, moment. This word in here, life. This word in here, night. And then the last word of the verse, morning. Now, these four words all imply time. That is what you and I live in tonight. You and I live in what's called time. To try to comprehend eternity, we'll never do it because we're beings of time. But I'm glad tonight that I've got a God, although He lives in eternity, I'm glad tonight that He can step off into time. He can step off into something that you and I know about even though we may not know about eternity. We cannot fathom that. But I'm glad I've got a God that will come to a place in my life and give me what I need. No matter how small of a space it may be. Now, when you get to thinking about this word, moment, we just had one. We just had another one. Just had another one. Moments are times that fill up a space. I'm thankful for some moments in my life where God has talked to me. When I think about my life, the moment of salvation. That was a moment that I'll never get over. 
because it was the moment that changed my eternal destiny. Ain't you glad tonight for your moment? Now, my moment may have not been the same time as your moment, but if you're here tonight and you've been born again by the grace of God, isn't it a blessing tonight that you have a moment in your life when God changed everything? Amen. I got to thinking about this and pondering on this just a little bit. And we find these words in here that imply time. But then I got to thinking about this there's some words in here not only that imply time but they are words that are from one extreme to the other. Now when we read this verse we find these extremes. We find here the Bible says for his anger endureth but a moment and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. When we think about these extremes, first of all tonight, I'd like to look at how in this verse, and from verse number 11, how to get from mourning, that time of weeping, that time of sorrow, that time in your life when everything seems to be falling apart and life begins to, in a sense, just fall to pieces. And you're in a time of mourning. Some things that will take place where you and I can get from that time of mourning to mourning. Now when I think about this, here in verse number 5, first of all, we find the Bible says, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. First of all tonight, we find that to get from morning to morning, we find the situation changed. How many of y'all remember the day when the situation changed in your life? Did you know there was a day in our life, if you're here tonight and been born again by the grace of God, you was under the wrath, the judgment, the anger of God. But isn't it a blessing for the day when the situation changed? Not how are we under the anger or the judgment of God no more, but you and I, as children of God, we're under the favor of God. I'm glad tonight that I am no longer under the judgment. Now, if you're here tonight and you're lost, you're under the judgment of God. You're under the condemnation. If you die, you'll go to hell. But in a blessing tonight, he says, whosoever will, let him come. If the Spirit of God is dealing with you, you have that invitation to come. He says, if you come, he will in no wise cast you out. I'm glad tonight that we can come to God. I remember the day I came. Even though I was raised in church all my life, that's all I've ever known. But I was under the judgment of God. And when I saw myself as a sinner, I got born again. The situation changed in my life. Not only do we find that the situation changed, but we find in this verse, verse number 5, the Bible says, For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Not only do we find that the situation changes, but the sound changed. Did you know tonight the sinner, the person that does not know God, they don't understand when someone is on their deathbed and they've got joy in their heart. It don't make sense. It, they cannot comprehend that. 
But did you know tonight we got a verse in the Bible? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And for you and I as children of God tonight, what a blessing for the day that the sound changed in our life. I'm glad tonight even though problems come, difficulties come, situations arise, I'm glad tonight as a child of God that my sound is different than the world. I'm glad that even in problems, see, it's good, and there's a big difference between happiness and joy. And y'all know what I'm talking about. See, there's a joy down on the inside of those of us that's been saved by the grace of God and things may still fall apart. But what a blessing that we can still have the joy of the Lord on the inside and understand that everything is going to be all right. How many of y'all remember the day the sound changed in your life there's uh we, we were talking about books a minute ago me and brother brother Doug and uh, there's an author by the name of Herbert Locklear brother Ron he knows of that fella he wrote a book entitled last words of sinner and saints and when you read that book and you realize the sound of a sinner on their deathbed versus the sound of someone that's been born again. Great difference. And I'm glad tonight to be one that knows the Lord and to realize that God is real. This ain't a game. This ain't something we're playing. This is reality. And so we thank God for the day that the situation changed and the sound changed. And to get from morning to morning, isn't that a blessing? We're no longer under the judgment of God, but under the favor of God. We're no longer just weeping and not having no hope and not realizing anything, but we've got a joy on the inside. The day the sound changed. But then to get from morning that time of weeping, that time of sorrow, to get from morning to morning. Not only does the situation change, the sound changes, but we find here in the Word of God, the Bible says, for his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Not only does the situation and the sound change, but to get from morning to morning, we find that the scenery changes. We was in the night. We was in darkness. We had no hope. We were without God. But you remember the day God flipped the light on? What a blessing in my life when God turned the light on and showed my need of salvation, showed where I was going without God, and I got born again, and God has turned the light on. You know, that's the reason you and I as children of God tonight, we, 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 we are not supposed to, although some live in this position, and I pray God help you tonight if you are, but I'm glad tonight that you and I, we ain't got to live in fear. Now, the world don't have no hope tonight. The world is in a situation tonight and all they can do is watch Fox News, CNN, and all that other stuff on the television and that's how they live life because they're in darkness. But you and I tonight, we're in the light. My scenery changed. No longer am I trying to figure out what's going on because we know the one who holds tomorrow. We know the one who's in control of what you and I are living in tonight. You know, it's amazing how our God tonight takes interest in you and I. I mean, He is interested in you and I as His children. I, I read this in an article some years ago, and uh, this article got to talking about at this particular time that Bill Gates was the richest man in the world. And I read this article about Bill Gates 
And probably today somebody's far exceeded his riches. But Bill Gates at that particular time, he was the richest man in the world. And uh, the, the, the article that I read, it said that if Bill Gates had to feed the bird world, every bird in the world, the article said Bill Gates would go broke in three days. And I read that, and I got thinking about my God. Yeah. Feeds the birds every day. There ain't never been a day. You ain't never seen a bird holding a sign, we'll work for food. That's because the God of heaven tonight is the one that feeds the birds every day. And on top of that, he takes care of you and I. There ain't never been a day that I've went without what I needed in life. Now, I may have went without what I wanted, but God has always took care of me. There's never been a day that I've went without food or a meal because God is interested in me. And God is interested in you. Thank God for the day that the scenery changed in our life. So we find here to get from morning to morning, we find that the situation changes. We find that the sound changes. We find that the scenery changes. But here in verse number 11, we find the Bible says, Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. And then in the middle of verse number 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, not only does the situation change, the sound changes and the singer changes, but to get from morning to morning, the spelling has to change. Now, I'm going to spell these to you. In verse number 11, this word morning is spelt this way. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And then in verse number 5, at the end of the verse, we find this word morning is spelled M-O-R-N-I-N-G. And so to get from morning to morning, you got to get you out of the way. Did you know tonight there's a lot of people in the world tonight and they're in a place of mourning and they're trying their best to fix it on their own. They've got their hands all over it and they're trying their best to fix it. But to get from morning to morning, you got to get you out of the way. You got to take your hands off of it and let the Lord get a hold of it. I don't know what you need in your life tonight. I don't know what problems you may be facing right now. But I can tell you tonight, if you would take your hands off of it and give it to God, God can do a whole lot better job with it than you and I can. But I find so often the reason that we're in this place of mourning is because we've got our hands all over it. You know, burdens are a real thing. Burdens are something in our life that are real. I read a story. This was back years and years ago, back before automobile. And I read this story about a, about a man. He went to town one day. Walking down the trail, got to the little town, went over to the feed store, got a big old 50-pound bag of seed to put in the ground. And he got over there and paid the man, got the big bag of seed, put it on his shoulder. He's walking down the trail, headed to the house. As he's walking down the trail, there's a man with a wagon and a team of mules pulling that wagon going the same direction that man was packing that big old 50 pound bag of seed the man running that team of mules pulled up beside that fella held them mules back and looked down at that fella on the ground walking he said sir I'm going the same direction you're going 
said, why don't you let me help you pack that load? So the feller on the ground holding the big old 50-pound bag of seed said, appreciate that, climbed up in the back of the wagon. That feller hit that team of mules, and there they went. Here directly, the man that was driving the team of mules looked behind him, and the feller was standing up in the back of the wagon holding that 50-pound bag of seed. The fella running the team of mules said, Sir, said you can put that down. These mules is a doing all the pulling. I read that and I got to thinking about in our life. We got burdens that we're packing. We got burdens that we're carrying. And we're in the back of a wagon, so to speak, and we're holding on to them. But I'm glad tonight we got a God that's a doing all the pulling. God said in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 7, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Why are you packing something that God already told you He'd pack? But if we're not careful, we want our hands on whatever it is we're trying to carry. Rather than letting him take hold of what we got. To get from morning to morning, the situation changes, the sound changes, the scenery changes, but the spelling has got to change. Got to get you out of the way. I don't know who plays the piano, but if you'll come play, I'm going to pray. And If you need to come to this altar, you mind the Lord. Whatever God may be talking to you about, I don't know what it is, but I'm glad that we've got a God who wants to pack your load tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, in these days to realize, Lord, that you are wanting to help us pack our load. I'm glad that we've got a God tonight that does that. I'm glad we've got a God tonight that no matter how big the load, no matter how small the load, I'm glad that we've got a God that we can give our load to. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us tonight. Lord, be with this church. Be with these people tonight. Lord, no doubt uh, the problems and situations sitting right here tonight, but I'm glad that you know all about it. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. If you need to come to this altar, you mind the Lord. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.